I don't know what year it was, uh, but I do remember the first time hearing Bob Dylan um, and, and a song that was just very passionate and very compelling, compelling rather. Um, and the, the song had a, a number of lyrics. One was, how many seas must a white dove sail before she sleeps in the sand? And how many times must the cannonballs be fired before people realize that too many people have died? And he went on to say, the answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. Later on, I believe that Stevie Wonder also picked up on that and recorded it as well. But I believe that Bob Dylan is the writer of that song. The answer to humanity's questions are not easily found. They are blowing in the wind. How many roads must a man walk down before they call him a man? Oh, it's, 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 another, it's a powerful joint. If you've never heard it, check it out. And by Bob Dylan, I mean, Stevie Wonder does it but Bob Dylan puts the power to it. I mean, really great. So I've raised the question today, how long will it take before humanity realizes too many Negroes have died since they started calling themselves black or African American? And I believe our Lord and Savior, his name is Jesus, has so privileged me to touch the lifespans of when we were known as colored people and we weren't dying. And during those years, known as colored people. Parenthetically, there was a few lynchings and, and castrations. And, and, and during that period of time, and Billie Holiday uh, coined a song uh, called Strange Fruit. Uh, and the song referenced the fact that across the South, and not in a massive way, but certainly enough to get anybody's attention. One of these events would have been horrific. But across the South over a period of about 30 years, 30 men were hung from trees in the South. And a part of the process of, of hanging them was to castrate them, to cut off their genitals. And many of the men who did such a dastardly act would take their genitals home as prizes. And when I think about the LGB, the trannies now, when I think about the transvestites and the young man Elijah that died up on Orchard Beach the other day, who cut off their genitals and castrate themselves, I wonder what in the hell is going on in the world when it used to be such a horrific thing for someone else to cut off your genitals. And now it is the popular thing for black men to cut off their genitals. And they would only, do, colored men would not do that. A, a, a Negro would not cut off his genitals for some sort of perverted sexual pleasure. But since he's become black and African American and he's lost his way, he has no sense of reality. He is as lost in space on American soil as you can possibly be. He really doesn't know he, uh, reality. But God has allowed me to live enough years to have lived through both of those periods and to understand them clearly. And then with some of the grace of God, I've been able to study and learn even more about that process. But what I wanna distinguish here today is that the horrific number of deaths and 95% of the black people that died, died at the hand of other black people was not the case when we were Negroes. It wasn't the case when we were colored. It's only when we became schizophrenic blacks and African Americans. And my question is, how long, how will it take before humanity realizes that black people are dying disproportionately because they refer to themselves and because of the spirit upon them is a spirit of blackness, it's a spirit of African Americanism. And that spirit itself is a spirit of death. It is a spirit of destruction. It is a spirit of rebellion. It is a spirit of disobedience. It is a spirit of ignorance. And all of those things are leading to massive number of deaths, including police shootings, including them shooting of each other, and more important, including multiple abortions happening in the black family, and including the desolation of families by black fathers. Since black and African American has become the identity, the death the destruction is off the chains of the charts.
in terms of how vicious this thing is. And it's mainly because of the identity crisis that they don't know who they are anymore. And as a result of it, the, we would have never, when we were colored, we would never kill each other. We, we identified as a, as a unified group. And even when we were Negroes, we, we wouldn't kill each other. We would help each other. We would, I listened to Precious LaFleur uh, last Wednesday night explain her experience in the Adlai Stevenson High School that if you didn't get there and get through the middle detectors in time, the classrooms were locked and you were left outside of the hallways to whatever went on. And that was hell itself. So just the pressure of getting up in the morning and trying to get into the classroom and the teachers had no compassion. See, when we were colored, we were Negroes, we rallied to one another. We tried to help one another. We supported, we educated, we understood the world, and we loved one another. The fathers took care of their children, worked three and four jobs to make sure that there's food on the table. When we were Negroes, when we were colored, when we, oh man, when we were colored, you, the, the, how, the little schoolhouses we were, were, were certain, certain centers of learning, where we learned great thinkers and philosophers, we learned the Bible. When we were colored, when we were Negroes, uh, it was an auspicious period in time. And then we went on to build other schools. I mean, I, then probably every young man in my colored Negro school situation thought that it was his appointed duty that once he graduated school to create schools like Booker T. Washington, like Fisk University, like Howard University. It was your appointed duty to go out and start schools and colleges yourself. I mean, it was just not par for the cause. And so, but you look at the young black men and the African-American men today, they don't even hell want to go to school. They don't want to go, let alone found and establish one and educate others. We were about this business of not only pulling up the colors and the Negroes, we weren't about a business of just pulling ourselves up by a bootstrap, but we were about the business of pulling one another up. I watched this same phenomena happen with Mexicans now who come to America and they work in the fields picking berries, strawberries, cabbage, tomatoes, and the hot sun, the way we pick cotton. And they'd get a little paycheck at the end of the week, and they'd send nearly 90% of that paycheck back down into Mexico. Mexico gets trillions of dollars from the illegals working in America. And it used to be the same way. The people used to come up from the islands, from down in Jamaica, and down in some of the other islands, and they would work and then send money back down into the islands to take care or back over to Africa. And there are many Africans that are doing that now, many Jamaicans that are sending money back. The little money that they get, then they send it back across the pond. Uh, and so we were about the spirit of family, of unity, of building, of helping, of enterprises with banks and schools and, of, and, and, and every sort of humanity that was possible. We did. Now, once we become black, we got back. You, the, 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 if you are, and I have asked a question, and so Bob Dylan raised the question, how many deaths did it take before people realize too many people have died? How many times must those cannonballs be fired before they realize this? Too many people. How much longer are black African Americans going to realize that they're dying because of their thinking. They're, they're killing themselves. I mean, you can argue that the, the, the people who are trannies now, the men who cut off their testicles and cut off their penis because they're looking for some sort of sexual pleasure, that they can't know what it is because they've never experienced, but they think that as a sexual pleasure beyond the God-given organs of testicles and a penis. I mean, how damn warped in the mind can any one person be looking for a sexual pleasure that first had to be preceded by one of the most painful memories, one of the most painful things that anybody can think of, to cut off your testicles and to cut off your penis in search of a sexual pleasure. How sick can that be? 
How sick can that be? And yet, yet, this is the order of the day of the blacks and the African American. A Negro would never do that. I'm telling you, the Negro man ain't he, he wouldn't. He, the cut it, boy, he'd never do that. Cause others cut it off of, of, in, in, in terms of their displeasure of him. But he would never do that to himself. So you have to look at a, a man like me and I say, God damn, my God, I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen anything as wicked as all of this. This has got to be the most wicked society of people that have ever lived. Blacks, and not, not white people, because they've been concerned. Now they're cutting their stuff off too, no doubt about it. But then you've never seen anything like this. And, the, and, and to try to reach them, there's one other thing, and I, I promise not to inflict myself upon you any further. I, I want to, uh, that until, you're not going to stop the police shootings. You're not going to stop that. You, you, you w w with all this march of these Black Lives Matter, <laughs> listen, Dwayne Wade would not be allowed to play basketball if he was promoting his son to cut off his penis. <laughs> we used to run thinking that somebody would catch us one night and cut it off. <laughs> a white man would catch it. And, and for a, a, a basketball star to support his son cutting off his testicles and his penis, what the hell? Damn. I mean, how? How, how, many, how, how, how long will it take before humanity realize that the black man now has two problems? One is that he doesn't understand the world. He doesn't. He doesn't. But now he has adopted a demonic. And guess who taught him to do it? Obama! Obama taught him to do it! I mean, you, 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 you've just never seen anything like this. So there's one, one final thing, and, I, and, and well, there's two things. Number one is, is that this process is only growing in power, and I and I alone am left to rail against it, but I will, and, and I will prevail. There's no doubt about that, because I'm the Lord's servant. God sent me, God has established me to be able to do this, to wake him up, to show how vile and how ignorant and how crazy he is. And in that context, the killings are not going to stop. You're, you're not going to stop the police shootings. You're not going to stop the black on black crime until you stop being black. You stop being African American. You're not going to do it. And I think one of the things that we've said about why Michael Jordan or Steph Curry or uh, the, the, the LeBron James will not live, uh, because they understand something as profoundly as, as anybody else that the black man will kill you. He'll even kill LeBron James at 12 o'clock at night. He will. He understands that process. So I think that it's important for us to recognize that you can't legislate the morality. You cannot legislate the ignorance that is culturalized in black and African ideology. There's no legislation that can make a man wise and make him think, make himself responsible. There's no legislation, and so the killings will continue until God brings Atla. There's one other thing, and this is an aside, that I want you to think about this carefully. That every time, every time you see someone, including LeBron James or Michael Jordan, every time you see one, a, a tranny, every time you see a gay person or a queer person or a lesbian, Every time you see one of them, understand that they probably have molested at least one very young child and potentially as many as three. There's a man on, on MSNBC called Eddie Glaude. He's professor of African studies at Princeton University. And Eddie Glaude pr promotes James Baldwin. James Baldwin is a historical figure from Harlem back in the 40s, the 50s, and the 60s, and he wrote in one of his books, Go Tell It on the Mountain, 
that his father being a Pentecostal preacher on 132nd Street, that at night he would molest his younger brother in the bed. James Baldwin being a dyed in the wool homosexual would have sex with his brother who had no defense against his stronger older brother sexing him up every night in the bed. He writes about, Jake Baldwin writes about that in his book. But you need to know that for every time you see a gay person, whether it's your son or your daughter or your friend or your friends or your friend's daughter or son, every time you, or somebody on television like Ellen DeGeneres or some of these other trannies that are part of the Black Lives Matter, every time you see one of them, understand that they've cut their teeth on molesting a three-year-old or a five-year-old. We had a young man in our church named Deacon Williams. I named him Remnant, who told of the horror of his uncle who started molesting him at five years of age and just continued right through his teenage years and he never learned how to be a man. Here's what I want you to say. Here's what I want you to understand. Don't miss it. Here's what you want. Every time you praise somebody who is an LGBTQ, they have most likely molested. It's one thing to have sex with somebody of age. That's one thing. But generally, these people get started molesting three-year-olds, five-year-olds, six-year-olds. That's where they get started. So it is potentially true that every person that announces, that including pastors of churches who stand up in pulpits and they themselves of pastors and potentially they were molested by their uncles or by their father or they were molested by some other pastor who were big molesters themselves of little boys. You think it's big time in the Catholic church. Oh, you ain't been Pentecostal yet or Assemblies of God. <laughs> you, you, you haven't been, no, you haven't been to the black church yet or the African Methodist Episcopal church. Where the pastors are molesters of little boys. How much longer? How many seas must a white dove sail before she sleeps in the sand? How many roads must a man walk down before they call him a man? And how long must humanity Put up with this deviant society. And how long will the Hamite brother call himself black before he wakes up? How long will he recognize that is calling himself black and African-American that has brought this despicable behavior and mindset and this sausage brain where he can't even think whether he has allowed himself to think it's honorable to cut off his penis and his testicles and he finds that honorable and he goes on major television shows with his son like Dwayne Wade and boasts of a, what a great culture we are because we've castrated ourselves. But when he identified himself as black and African American, he also castrated a part of his brain. He can't think no more. He don't. I swear to God, I'm telling you, I would not lie to you. I would not lie to you. I will not lie to you. He can't think no more. You can't even talk to him. He just like <laughs> pouring water off a duck's back. He doesn't think, he doesn't understand the world. How long? How long? I hope not long. I hope not long before he stops calling himself black. Years ago, you call back in the 19, early 60s, late 50s, you call one of us black, that was fighting words. You ain't go, we ain't, you, whoo, nah, uh, it's fighting words. Call us African from the dark continent, that's fighting words. How long? How long? I pray it's not long. I said it three times. I'm keep keeping count. I want to leave you with this. First of all, that Humanity needs to come to the aid of the man who calls himself black and African and identifies with Obama. And the whole world needs to condemn Obama for what he has done by encouraging his, if you will, lineage to cut off their testicles and to cut off their, and for a woman to do to her manipulation of her body. The world needs to condemn Obama. 
needs to stand and condemn him. And there needs to be an understanding of the scourge of how could you go from fearing the white man or the Klan cutting off your testicles to you now having Dwayne Wade cut his son's testicles off. How, how, how did we get there? How do we get there? How do we get there? Don't you see? Don't, 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 don't you see? Don't you, don't you see? And then finally, the things I've said three times, not for the fourth time, and not to inflict myself any further. I doubt, very seriously, there is anybody who has come out of the closet and identified as LGBTQ+, that has not molested a young child, and some as early as three years of age. Every time you see one of these persons, you have to ask yourself, in your background, have you molested an underage person? Have you actually ruined some person's life, such as Deacon Remnant Williams, five years old, teaching him the taste of the flesh of a man? Every time you see one of them, every time you see one of them in their background, it's most potentially, if not absolutely sure, that they're pedophiles and molesters. This message is not going to go well with the global internet police. I don't know if they'll let it get posted. But you've heard it. The few of you that have heard it today, make the best use of it. And I'm talking to some guilty people too today. I am. I'm talking to women who have molested their sisters in the bed at night and brothers who have molested each other. I'm talking to guilty people, and you want to raise it up before God. But you wouldn't do that if you were colored. You wouldn't. You wouldn't do that if you were Negro. Or at least you wouldn't praise, you wouldn't praise it as some sort of noble act. They've taken something as despicable and as ugly as this and made it a noble act. And now Black Lives Matter is at the head of the pack. Black Lives Matter is not about black justice. It's about black gender, if you will, communist ideology of forcing people out of the gender of God into the gender of Satan. And I, and I alone, except for you, stand with me. I'm gonna go forward. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna make it. I, I am the Lord's servant. I, I, I will make it. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to me today. I'm James Eben Manning, everybody. <laughs>